Hi and welcome to McGunn Media. In this short video I'm going to be talking to you about how to put textures together. In particular for this shoot we're going to be putting textures together for a bread making shoot. So as with discussion with our previous videos about layering and how to layer, I'm going to start exactly the same way. The thing with choosing props and choosing textures for your photo shoot really depends on what it is that you're trying to achieve. For example, in this shoot we're going to be doing a bread making session. So I'm going to set up three very different scenarios for you, for you to understand how you build up your different scenarios and what it is you uh, have in mind at the end will determine on how you make those selections. So I have here in the first one a white board uh, with wood and for this scenario I'm going to be after a very clean image for web. It's going to be a bread making session that has a clean airy feel um, that can be published in a small image for web that's going to be stand out and noticeable. In this image, as a layer, I have just ordinary wood, untreated, and the idea and concept for this one is going to be homemade, um, very traditional bread making. And in this one, it's going to be a very clean, very modern image on bread making in a, in a perhaps high class restaurant or a, um, a scenario where it says modern. Okay, so automatically for those three scenarios you can see that there's a selection made just from the ground up from choosing your uh, base. The next thing I will choose is the objects that go in it. So we're making bread, you put bread in a bowl and you mix your ingredients up. So for bowls, for the first scenario, I'm gonna want a white bowl perhaps. Again, clean, light, airy feel. I've selected a white bowl that has ridges on it. The ridges um, will go in quite nicely with, with the wood that's already there. To be honest, if it didn't have ridges, that would also be fine. The white ceramic bowls at the moment with the, the blue around the top of them, that would also be amazing in this scenario and would add just a little bit of blue flavor in there as well. So white bowl goes in that one. In this one, it's far more traditional. So I'm after a traditional looking bowl with warming colors. So this one here will go perfectly well for me. And the last one, the last one I could choose a variety of things. I could perhaps have a glass bowl, a metal bowl, or in our case, because I've selected uh, to be working on a glass that's slightly colored, um, I also have a bowl, a ceramic bowl. It's got no textures on the side. It's very clean, very sleek, um, and uh, I think because the colour matches the glass, that's why I've selected it for this. Okay, so then the next thing I might add is the next layer. Now, in this scenario, we might, the next layer might be a cooling rack or a, a surface to actually pour all the ingredients onto. So in our white scenario, a light airy, we might not want a solid um, airing rack for this. We might want something just a little bit more playful. So I've got here a little white, it's a metal IKEA airing tray. So that sort of thing there will go quite well. Adds a little bit of playfulness to the image as well. This scenario again, very uh, much more traditional. So. I might want to add a breadboard or a surface to be able to pour all the ingredients onto, bearing in mind that this surface currently is not able to have all the ingredients onto it um, and to work on it and knead bread. So, breadboard. And I might put that underneath there. And then I might have all of the ingredients on this side and pile them up and just have a little bit of fun. 
Okay, so in the last scenario, very clean, very modern, um, I'm going to want perhaps a, an airing rack that's metal. So anything metal in there or shiny will work. So I have here a metal rack. So it's all about building up the layers in your image. So the next thing I might then think is, okay, so in the process of making, we've found a surface to work on. We put the bread into the bowl. Normally when you put it in and you leave it, it's to help it rise. It's for the bread to rise and let it rest. So when it's in the bowl, it will need a cover over it to help keep all the warmth into the bread to activate the yeast. So then we're looking for a texture, we're looking for a piece of fabric or material or cloth that will go into each scenario. So again, based on what it is that we're trying to achieve, in this white section, if we were trying to achieve something uh, perhaps uh, for uh, the internet, we at this point might introduce just a splash of colour. So here we might just introduce um, a blue with a pop of red. Again, this cloth is uh, still within a homemade sort of feel, so bread homemade, that goes. Splash of colour for the internet, perfect. That might, that might work fine. If, on the other hand, this scenario was for making bread at home with your children, little bread hedgehogs, you might want to add a lot more colour and a lot more bold colours. So at this point, you may want to add a splash of red. Red is incredibly bold. Red polka dots, perfect. That would work. In fact, this is actually um, a, bread, a bread bag, so that goes incredibly well in this scenario. So little red, perfect. If on the other hand you want it to be a little bit more adult orientated, um, then perhaps you might want to bring that back a little bit. And at this point you may want to have uh, some of the cheesecloths or um, even a pink colour here will still keep, will bring the whites back into a warm area whilst keeping the clean fresh li uh, look for you. Um, and pink here would go absolutely fine. Of course, coming into this section, it's um, warm, homely. So actually, cheesecloths and pinks would also work incredibly well here. In fact, that's a, that's a given. I'm going to leave that in this scenario, though. Um, we can also move far more into a traditional texture and traditional pattern. If you have any doilies or lace work around um, your linens, that would work incredibly well covering this bowl here. Or it could even hold a lot more texture. Again, I have a bread uh, bag here. Um, and that sort of texture in this image, well, as you can see, because of the wood, the textures can be a lot more knotted and a lot more gritty and a lot more dynamic, um, and it will hold it very well. Um, in here, um, it will work. It will say homely, but it will bring it back into more of an oldie fashion type homely than it does more, um, internet kind of way. But again, depending on which way you want to go, you may want to take it that way. Okay, now coming into our modern scenario. In the modern scenario, if you have white linen, white linen over that will work perfectly well, especially as at the moment there's nothing white in this scenario. It's all greens and blues, so that's absolutely fine. If you are going to add some texture in your cloth, um, but keep it very clean, very simple texture, perhaps uh, with a little bit of uh, indenting work, but nothing too much because you don't want to put it back into a uh, homely type image. Um, in the uh, home image, if you did want to use a clean type linen with no texture, to be honest, if you keep it with um, the colour range, you're going to get away with that a lot better. White linen in this situation is a little bit too clinical for the look that you're trying to go for. Okay, 
So once you have this base layering and you, you know, there's like four elements in each currently, and then you add your actual ingredients and start working with it, that's probably all you're going to need for an amazing shot. So I hope you found this video to be informative. If you did, please leave us comments in the comments box below and don't forget to check our Facebook page out.